An easy way to keep your band on the same page and to avoid those awkward, oh my gosh, what's happening now moments is to use a guide cue. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how to add cues or guide cues to your Ableton Live file so that your band always knows exactly what's happening next. Now they go by many names, guide cues, slate tracks, cues, but whatever you wanna call them, adding some sort of audio file to your Ableton Live set to tell you exactly what section is coming next, or maybe even to count in in an intro or count into a section is a really, really helpful way to, again, keep everyone on the same page. Now, for me personally, I don't love guide cues. I've always kind of felt a little bit like they're cheating, but I've come to realize and recognize that it does make for a more comfortable experience on stage. For example, um, we've all been on stage before where we have those moments where just the energy, the excitement of the moment leads us to suddenly go, crap, what song is next? Or leads us to suddenly go, gosh, I can't remember if we play this two times or we play it one time. And using guide cues is a really easy kind of cheat, a, a, a cheat code, if you will, if you're from a certain generation that understands that terminology, um, that allows you to, to make sure everyone's on the same page and, and knows the exact right uh, section is coming next. Let's talk about a couple things you need in order to use cues. Number one, you've got to already be playing with a click track. So I've got an Ableton Live file open here. We'll break this down in a second. But the most important thing that's gonna allow me to use a guide cue or to use cues is the fact that I have a click track. Now, I'm personally using Foundations for Live, which is something I sell through the site, something that's available in my basic tracks template and advanced tracks template. Um, but you can use free click tracks available if you head to from studiostage.com slash clicks. You can download the free click tracks that I have available on my site. You wanna load them into your Ableton Live session. You want your clicks to be in time with your tracks, uh, perfectly warped, everything working together. Uh, and then we've got our stems loaded into our Ableton Live set. Now, you may not be using stems, you may not be performing with stems. In fact, you may go, well, well, we are professional musicians. We play everything live the way it should be. Uh, sure, great, fantastic. I'm not gonna argue with you. Whatever you wanna do, you do you. But you need to at least have a click track uh, in your song. Whether you have stems or not, you've got a click track. Now, the second thing you should do is head to from studiotostage.com slash cues, and you can download my free guide cues or cues to add to your Ableton file. So now let's open my Ableton file and let's actually do this from scratch. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So first I'll show you exactly what my guide cues are for this particular song. Uh, I've already added them in. Uh, this is a, a file I formatted using my guide cue player. So this is a MIDI instrument, but this is what cues sound like. Uh, this is why they're particularly helpful in intros. And then we'll walk through the process of actually adding these in. So uh, let's start at the top here. I'll press play. One, two, intro, two, three, four. Right, and then you can hear that we're into the intro of the song. So that may seem like a small thing, but just imagine coming out of a, a song before that, maybe a big trash can moment happening on, on stage, just a lot of stuff happening and you suddenly missing the count off or not knowing exactly what's happening. Having that guide cue really helps you stay in time together and on the same page. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute this guide track, okay? And I'm actually, I'm gonna put it in, uh, in this uh, stems right here, right? In this group track so that um, you actually can't see it. It's gonna disappear for a moment. We'll get back to it later. What I'm gonna do is go over to Live's browser uh, I've added my free cues. You can see them on the desktop here, okay? Uh, if you wanna add that folder, you could do add folder. Let's actually add it directly to our browser. Find it on your computer and hit open. So now I've got my click track in. Again, that's the most important thing. Again, head to fromstudiostage.com slash clicks to download that if you need that. I've got my stems in, you don't have to have stems. And then I went to from studiosage.com slash cues to download these free guide cues. So let's add a count off here at the beginning. So I'm gonna take my first uh, uh, click here and I'm gonna drop it in right on uh, the first beat. Now this, this song is in 4-4, so I'm actually gonna right click. Actually, we're already set up for 4-4, which is perfect. So then I'm just gonna drop two in, then we're gonna drop three in, and we're gonna drop four in. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four. And then my intro is happening here. So what I like to do in those moments, this maybe seems a little uh, silly, but do intro and then now we'll do two, three, and then four. Now, one nice thing particularly about using, uh, in my case, I used my guide cue player, is that's already one MIDI clip all put together. So I could just drop that in. It's already preset for a uh, two measure count in. Um, another thing you may wanna do at the beginning of songs is record a version of you saying the name of the song. Um, so um, uh, let's say we're doing the song Come Together. Uh, we just say, come together, record uh, the audio. Then we drop it into our Ableton Live set at the beginning here. You could even maybe go 
and do something like this. Click at the very beginning of your set to command I or control I if you're on a PC, add a measure count in, and you could add a locator that's actually the start of your song. And maybe it's starting something like this. And you could say like song name, right? And then when you want to start that song, you actually assign it to that locator. You hear the song name and then you hear your count in. Um, I particularly don't do that, but if you're, again, doing a live set with a lot of songs, maybe you're in a cover band and you've got like a hundred songs in your Ableton set, uh, that may be a helpful utility for you. Okay, so let's get back to our set here. Uh, so there's our intro. Now we're gonna go into our verse. So typically what you wanna do with guide cues, uh, we're gonna find the section we're heading into, which is verse, and I wanna place it a measure before that section. So I'm gonna click and drag verse, I'm gonna put it again, a measure before the verse section right here, okay? So then what you can do, let's, let's do two more. What I'm gonna do is continue to do this throughout the rest of the song. Uh, so there's another verse, right? So we'll drop this first cue in here. Again, I'm putting it a measure before it actually happens. Uh, and then we have a chorus, let's do a chorus. I'll show on this chorus what some people do. Um, you don't have to do this, but some people like counting into every section. So what you would do is like the section name, and then you would do two, three, and then four. Again, that's a lot of work to have to drag that in every time. My guide cue player, that's one clip that just says chorus and has two, three, four, I count in there. Uh, but this could be really, really helpful. Again, my first reaction and initial reaction using guide cues was like, man, can't we just learn the songs? And there's an element of that, that I think we should know our songs really well. But then there's also an element of the amount of times I could think of standing on stage, playing guitar, um, uh, adrenaline is running high. We just got off a higher energy song, then starting another song and instantly going, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what's happening here. I, I've actually heard stories of mu music directors um, trying to serve their artists that they're working with really well, and maybe putting like the lyric uh, of the first part of a song at the beginning, uh, or knowing a trouble area. They always um, miss this because it's an extra measure here. Uh, there's a measure of two, four. Actually in this song, let me show you a practical example here. Um, in this song, there is uh, a measure of two, four. So let me go to that. And a lot of times I find that the bands would mess that up, right? They'd mess up that section. So what I would do here is do something like this. I would do a count, um, let's actually do, let's redo this one, and then we'll say two, and then this one, we'll do one, two, three, and then four. And if I wanted to, again, I could go the extra mile if I wanted and record just a clip of me saying two, four, and then count into that if I wanted. But adding these extra counts here is really gonna help my, my band uh, or the artists I'm working with uh, just feel comfortable and feel confident about where we are in the song. You could say it's cheating, and if you think it's cheating, great. Again, that's that's the mindset I had. That's like a, a old school kind of closed-minded mindset. But if that's the mindset you want to have, great. Stop watching the tutorial. This isn't for you. Uh, but for the rest of us, you get this kind of cheat code, which is being able to use guide cues on stage. Now, let's talk about the final piece of this, the, the most important piece of this in order to do this effectively. But before I do that, I just want to encourage you to consider subscribing to this channel. So every single day, 10 a.m. Central, I post a brand new tutorial showing how to use Ableton Live on stage completely for free. All you have to do is hit subscribe, enable the bell icon so you know exactly when I go live. Okay, so most important piece of this is actually routing this properly. So let's look at my click and where my click is routed. And you can see right now my click is routed to one. So what I'm gonna do is go here to my cues. We're gonna rename this cues, okay? We're gonna do audio two external out, and we're gonna set this to one. Now in this particular setup, I have uh, my clicking cues going out of the left side, I have tracks going out of the right side, so you can see everything is uh, routed here to go to the master output. Maybe perhaps you've got a multi-output setup and scenario like I've got with my return tracks here, so three, four, all the way to 12. Um, whatever, however many outputs you're doing, whatever scenario you're, you're in, it's super important to make sure that your cues and your click are routed separately than your tracks. Now, if you've got your cues added into your set um, and you've got each one of your song sections programmed, you can hit save, and then you're gonna want to build a set with that content. Now, looking at my, live, uh, my Ableton Live file here, you may be looking at this and going, well, Will, What's this tempo track? What's this markers track, this original track? How is everything grouped and how in the world are you using uh, return tracks for your outputs? Well, well, I'm able to do all of that because I'm working from my from studio to stage free tracks template. And if you wanna get that same template, format your content so it looks exactly this way, 
so that when you drag your Ableton Live set into another set, your tempo comes with it and your locator information comes with it. Then head to firmstudiosage.com slash template to download my free track template. It's available for Live 9, 10, 11, and any new version of Ableton Live. And it works in intro, standard, or suite, and it works on PC or Mac. So if you're running tracks in Ableton Live, make sure you head to fromstudiostage.com slash template to download that template for free. And if you wanna learn more about performing on stage with Ableton Live, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and enable the bell icon so that you see when I go live every single day, 10 a.m. Central with a brand new tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.